Hello everyone, welcome to Encryption, the tech tips and tutorial channel. In this video, we will learn how to install FreeBSD Linux, configure networking on it and install Genome Desktop. Before looking into the installation steps, let's briefly know what is FreeBSD and where it is used. FreeBSD is a Unix-like operating system that is free and open source. It is based on Berkeley software distribution or the BSD. It is just like another Linux distro, but there are two major differences in scope and licensing. FreeBSD maintains a complete system, that is the project provides a kernel, device drivers, user land utilities and documentation, where Linux only provides a kernel and drivers and relies on third parties for system software. And FreeBSD source code is generally released under a permissive BSD license rather than the copy left GPL used by the Linux. FreeBSD is used to be set up and used as a mail server, web server, firewall, FTP server, DNA server, and router, among other things, since the base system and the ports collection of the FreeBSD contain a large collection of server-related software. FreeBSD is used by a number of enterprises and applications including Apple, Cisco, Dell, EMC or Isilon, Intel or McAfee, iX Systems, Juniper, Microsoft Azure, NetApp, NetGate, Netflix, Sony and many others. So learning the FreeBSD Linux administration is always a plus point to any IT professionals and the aspirants. Now let's see how to install FreeBSD Linux as a virtual machine in a hypervisor such as VMware Workstation. First of all, let's download the ISO image of the FreeBSD Linux operating system. Open the official website of FreeBSD which is freebsd.org and here click on the download FreeBSD button. Scrolling a bit down, we can see some of the releases of the FreeBSD out of which we are going to download the FreeBSD 13.0 release AMD64. Here in the list, we can see several files of different types containing the ISO images of FreeBSD. Click on this FreeBSD 13.0 release AMD64 disk 1.iso to download it. Then choose the location to store the file and click on the save button. The file size is more than 900 MB. So it may take some time to complete the download depending upon your internet speed. Let the download complete and I will be right back after the download is complete. Okay, the download is complete. Let's move on and create a new virtual machine for this FreeBSD. Here, locate the ISO image file of the FreeBSD that we have downloaded on our computer. Let's give a name to the virtual machine such as FreeBSD 13. Click on the store virtual disk as a single file. By default, 256 MB of memory or the RAM is allocated to the virtual machine. Let's customize it and increase a bit. That is 1 GB. Also, let's increase the cores of the CPU to 2 so that the installation process and performance of the FreeBSD gets a little bit better. For the network adapter, by default, the NAT is selected. It's okay if you don't have a custom NAT network, you can just leave it as it is. But in my case, I have configured a custom NAT network in the VM workstation. So I want to attach the VM in the custom NAT network. In your case, you can just skip this step. I mean the network adapter step only. Now the virtual machine is created. Click on the power on this virtual machine to begin the installation. Here just press the enter key or press 1 to boot multi-user. As almost all the Linux distributions or Unix-like operating systems are built in with multi-user support. We prefer to install the multi-user operating system so that more than one users can access the system at the same time and perform their operations. Just press the enter key on this welcome prompt. Again, press your enter key to continue with the default key map. The key map refers which keyboard you want to use. Continuing with default selects the US standard keyboard and we are okay with it. Here set the host name to the machine. I am going to give the host name as 
freevst.encryption.com and hit enter. In this section, uh, you can just hit enter, leaving the default components already selected with the star symbol. Or if you want to select more, you can do that by going to the component and pressing the space bar key. Other than the already selected, I want to add the ports, source and then hit OK. In the partitioning section as well, just hit enter to continue with auto GFS. Here on the GFS configuration section 2, just hit enter to proceed with the installation. Let it the stripe selected on the type of RAID configuration and hit enter. Here press the space bar key to select the disk and hit enter. The GFS configuration prompt now asks if you are sure to destroy the current content of the disk DA0. Since it is a virtual disk and we are going to use it to the virtual machine, just select yes and hit enter. After the installation of the required stuffs, the pre-BSD installer is asking you to change the root password. So type a new password. Please don't surprise the typed character will not be visible. Then retype the same password to confirm. Here in the network configuration section, we can see the EM0 network interface and you don't have to do anything here. So just hit enter. I don't want to configure the IPv6 address, so I select the no and hit enter. Now I go to my region and hit enter. Again hit enter to confirm the time zone. The date is correct, so I skip the date setting. Again I just hit enter to skip the time setups. Here in the system configuration section, I don't want to add any more services to be started at boot, so I just hit enter. In the system hardening section 2, I don't want to choose any option. So I hit the enter key. Just press enter in the add user accounts section to add a new normal user. Type the username, type the full name of the user, hit enter to leave the UID empty and just hit enter. Enter to leave the defaults. Use password based authentication. Yes. Use an empty password? No. I enter a password to the user encryption. Then again enter the password to confirm. Lock out the account after creation? No. Okay. Yes. Add another user? No. Now hit enter to apply configuration and exit the installer. The installation is now finished. Before existing the installer, would you like to open a cell in the new system to make any final manual modifications? No. Installation of pre-BSD is complete. Would you like to reboot into the installed system now? Yes, reboot. The installation is complete now. Let the system reboot. Let's enter the login name as root and type the password to log in to the free BSD. Here we go. We are logged into the free BSD system. Running the ifconfig command, we can see the network interfaces EM0 and the LO0. The EM0 is the real network adapter which is going to connect the pre-BSD system to the network and the internet. But it does not have an IP address assigned or, or it hasn't obtained any IP address yet. We will see it in the next section, the network configuration. Okay, welcome back. Now let's work to network connectivity to the system. Running the if config command, we can see the network interface EM0, but we can see any IP address assigned to the interface or it hasn't obtained itself from the DHCP. Let's read the content of the file slash etc slash rc.conf with cat. Here we can see the host name sshd underscore enable equals s and other configuration parameter but we don't see the IP or DSCP or anything like that. To add the configuration parameter which tells the FreeBSD to obtain IP address from DSCP server, let's edit the file with BI editor and add a line on it as ifconfig underscore em0 
equals double quotation start dscp double quotation close then save and exit from the file then let's restart the network as slash etc slash net start now if we run if config we should see the interface getting ip address from the dscp server but we don't let's check the slash etc slash rc.conf file everything seems to be okay let's reboot the system and check back okay the system is booted up log in to it using the root user and the password then run the if config command here we go we can see the interface em0 has got the ip configurations and we can see the ip address as 192.168.233.149 the custom nat network ip to verify the network and the internet connectivity let's ping the google this verifies that the system participates in the network and can reach the internet now as the final task of this video let's install the genome packages so that we get the graphical user interface in the pre bs2 linux system first make sure you have the network and connectivity in the system by pinging any public web server or the public website because the FreeBSD package manager is going to download the genome desktop packages from its official remote repository and install them then run pkg space update to update the FreeBSD repository catalog as you can see all repositories are up to date moving on to the next step install the genome desktop packages and its dependencies as pkg space install space genome dash desktop space gdm space xorg space genome 3 since it has to download more than 300 packages of approximately 400 mb of size and install them it may take some time so i pause the video here and i will be right back after the installation is complete okay the installation now is complete next we need to add some genome configuration parameter in the slash etc slash rc.con file so let's do that too open the slash etc slash rc.con file with a text editor and add the lines as i do and then save and exit the file Finally, configure a persistent mount to slash proc directory. To do so, open the slash etc slash fstav file with a text editor and add the line as I do here. Then save and exit the file. Then reboot the system. In the next reboot, you will get the graphical version of the free BSD. As we expected, we have got the graphical login screen. Enter the login password of the user and hit enter to login. Here we go. We have got the desktop of the FreeBSD. Okay guys, this is how we can install the FreeBSD in VMware Workstation. Configure networking and install and configure Genome Desktop to get the FreeBSD desktop. I hope the video was useful to you. Please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video. See you on other videos. Till then, have a nice time. Goodbye.